It's time for the Lesson Tee presented by Family Golf and Learning Center. And today we welcome in the owner and uh, proprietor and the man that has created the Family Golf and Learning Center, PGA of America golf professional, Adam Betts. Adam, how are you? I'm doing great this morning, Jay. How are you doing? Doing good. We should let people know we're coming to them Thursday of the Masters, so we both got a little little extra smile because it's right. those, those high holy days. Who do you like at, at Augusta? You know, it's tough because a lot of the top guys that are in the field, you haven't been watching play every week uh, leading up to the Masters. But I'd say one of the hottest players right now, um, obviously, is Jordan Spieth, not only with the win last week, but, you know, he's on the cusp of uh, being the old Jordan Spieth that we all remember from years past. And, uh, you know, he struggled for a little while, but it seems like he's back into his form and um, he's my horse this week. Let me talk to you about him as an from the instructor per, per, perspective on your side. Yeah, sure. I mean, this was a guy that looked as good as you could get. Now, he was making everything, and he won three majors real quick, and then he lost it, and, and, mm-hmm. and then he really lost it um, to the point where a lot of people wondered, you know, can he get back to even decent form? Yeah. You look at what he's done from – missing the cut at Torrey Pines and then stringing together top fives everywhere except at the players Mm -hmm. and then winning in his home state last week. Um, From an instructor's view, and and he talks a lot about his work with his instructor and all Mm -hmm. the hard work. Um, Is it, is it odd to see a guy at that high a level have to do that much work? You know, in my mind, no, not really. Uh, it just shows how fragile, mm. uh, you know, this game is and, and really, you know, how quickly your confidence can be shaken, um, you know, because that's really what it all boils down to is he he wasn't confident. Um, you know, you got to work hard at this game and you got to stay on top of it. And when you're playing at such a high level like those guys are, the line is very thin. And I mean, his confidence is shaken up when he's shooting, you know, 72, 73, 71. <laughs> uh, these guys have to go out and shoot seven, seven, eight under. And, uh, you know, it's not very, very easy. They make it look easy. Um, but, you know, he wasn't playing his best golf there for a, a pretty long stretch, maybe yeah. three or four years. And, uh, you know, when your confidence is gone, you got to work hard to, to get it back and find it again. All right. Well, let's 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 talk about instruction, because I, I other than the fact you got places to hit golf balls, mm-hmm. it's the to me, it's the, the number one thing you guys do. Um, you've taken it to a whole nother level with, with the crew that you've got uh, along with yourself. Um, and and, you know, there's still people out there. It's like going to the doctor. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, they they just don't want to do it. And, and I've tried to explain that there are a lot of different price levels. You guys have clinics, different instructors have different pricing plans, all mm-hmm. this different jazz. Instead of wasting money on going out and playing a $60 golf course and beating your head against the wall, take a series of lessons and try and figure something out, right? Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, obviously, going out and playing golf is a lot of fun, and I understand why people go out and do it. I love the game, too. Um You know, but really, if you're going to spend a little bit of money on lessons, you're going to benefit from it. Um, You know, in this game, you need a little direction. You can't go out there and and tinker and try this, try that. I read that on Golf Digest. I watched that video on (laughs) YouTube and I'm going to I'm going to get better because of those things. You know, those don't they're all great tips and there is a lot of great content out there, uh, but it's, it's not applicable to to you and every golfer. Um, at that moment in time. So, you know, that's why we have so many great instructors here because we like to give our golfers direction with their game, give them a clear understanding of where they're at with their swing, with their short game, uh, within every aspect of their game, and, and give them a, a, a direction to move their game in a, in a good way, in a positive way. So, But it, it doesn't stop there. It can and, and, and mm-hmm. you know, that's the that's the thing of what's so unique. And I've been playing golf in this town for 40 years pretty decently. Yes, you have. You, you have changed things, my friend. And, and, and I mean that. When, and, and, and what I've learned the last five weeks about what you what a player or a golfer can benefit from so many facets of Family Golf and Learning Center. Yeah. We just talked about the instruction. 
you've got the equipment covered with the guy we did last week, CJ uh, Hertz. I mean, back in the day when you and I were playing, John Kelly was the guy. Everybody went yeah. to John Kelly. I love John. So, yep. And, and now CJ's that guy. And, and the knowledge and, and the stuff, it, I don't understand it all. I, I, I'll be honest, but it, I know it. I know it's down to a science, mm-hmm. and it's making a difference in people's games. Sure. You've got the equipment aspect. If somebody's got an injury or they want to get stronger or want to get quicker, you've got elevated performance there. You, you've got the, you've got the, you know, the, that aspect. If it rains, <laughs> you've got the, simula- you got the simulators in the winter. I mean, it, it's got to be a lot of fun for you right now mm-hmm. to, as the season really kicks off, um, to see everything in motion that you envisioned. Yeah, you know, uh, it is really neat to have a vision and, and, and be at this place where it's all coming together um, in the community and all the golfers in St. Louis and around town get to enjoy all the resources we provide. Um, you know, golf is a journey and, uh, you know, you, you got to practice and you got to work at it and providing a quality practice facility with all the resources that we offer the golfer uh, was really the whole idea behind it. Um you know, for a long time, there there weren't very many great practice facilities in St. Louis. You know, I played on the mini tours down in Florida. I'd come home for Christmas and I'd try to go to the driving range, even this driving range, honestly. Um, and you'd hit off a poor mat. You'd hit a golf ball that flew in four directions before it landed. Um, you know, you really couldn't get any quality practice um, in at any of the local driving ranges. So, you know, that's where the vision started for me. It was you know what, we need a good driving range that has good turf that you can hit off, not only the mats with heaters and all that stuff for the winter and the the poor weather days, but a good grass tee. We need to have a good short game area, which that's to come. Um, You know, we needed a good golf ball. You know, we have a Callaway premium range ball that flies the same distance the ball you're going to play with. That's huge. Um, So you can get some good feedback with distance control. Um, And so we're putting all these practice, you know, resources together for people. On top of that, you've mentioned the instructional piece. We have some great teachers and some great resources for you to learn, get better, regardless of what your aspirations and goals are with your own game. And then the fitness piece is is an incredible, awesome offering that we have. And I can't wait to develop that even more to where we bring in golf instruction and fitness together uh, and really start to develop these golfers into the best players they can be. Well, and and I, I, I stress, try and stress when we talk to Crash, that I want to speak to that 15 handicap who thinks that a little, you know, that a little strengthening or a little um, flexibility might matter to them. They're wrong. And and we're not talking about, you know, Lou Ferrigno. Mm -hmm. We're we're talking about being able to be a little more mobile and maybe not uh, feel as bad after you Yeah, I mean, the the fitness piece is not only for – elevating your speeds, elevating your flexibility, you know, playing the game better uh, with the body that you're, you're gifted with. It's also about longevity of the game, playing yeah. pain free, um, playing for a longer period of time in your life. Um, you know, we got guys up there working out that are in their seventies. You know, my father's 65. He's working out now and seeing benefits in his golf game uh, far more than he ever expected because of what crash is doing with him. So, you know, we have that instructional piece where we point out, kind of what your tendencies are with your swing and what you need to do with your golf swing to move it in a good direction. But then we got Crash and and Murph upstairs at Elevated Performance telling you what your body needs to do and the limitations it has, and then writes a plan and a program for you to improve in that way. So literally every resource for a golfer to get better is here at Family Golf and Learning Center. Every week as we speak with Adam Betts, the owner, operator, the visionary uh, of Family Golf and Learning Center, every week I get asked about junior golf. Yeah. I got an instant message last night from a friend of mine who said their daughter was going to be involved in the CYC, which has really grown the last couple of years. And, and not surprising here in the Lou that it would it, sure. it would grow. Yeah. Um, but, but you guys are involved in that. Mm-hmm. So you've got that aspect. You've also got a PGA Junior League, which both of you, both you and I, wish they had back when we were no, uh, junior, junior golfers. Yeah. Um, you know that you know better than anybody that those kids are the future of the game, whether they're 
uh, playing in the Masters or whether they're you know coming to a driving range 40 yeah. years from now. Um, yeah. Junior golf is very important, and people can get involved. All they need to do is contact you, right? Yeah, absolutely. All the information that uh, junior – we all the information on the junior golf programs we have here at Family Golf are on our website, familygolfonline.com. Go under Junior Golf, and we have a few different tabs, the Junior League, our own clinics, our FGLC clinics that we host – twice a week for each age group or skill level. And then the CYC is done through your parish. Um, and so if you're part of the CYC, your parish is a part of the CYC, I encourage you to sign your kids up. It's a great uh, introduction to golf um, and the kids come out in numbers. I mean, it's incredible to see, you know, 50 kids show up at night, you know, to come to CYC golf. It's really a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with the CYC groups. You know, the junior league, you can sign up online for that. You can sign up for our uh, family golf and learning center clinics online uh, and get all your information there. And if, if anything's unclear, just give us a call. We'll, uh, we'll clear it up for you and, and help you understand what we're doing here. Now everybody sees I got the, the masters lit on. Adam's got that bad boy, but there you go. Um, there's, that means I'm going to have to get in my car and, and get over to Marshall road. You we don't see those, enough, Jay. Come on down. You got those lids in, you, you've got some really good apparel. I mean, that's just another aspect. And, and we got some questions. Um, Cindy in Eureka wants to know a tip mm -hmm. on keeping her head down. She says her boyfriend always tells her she's lifting up her head on chips and iron shots. So she's having that pull up. What, what, mm -hmm. any thought process or any tip? You know, I, th I think I'd have to see what she's doing. It's very unusual for somebody to actually pick up their head during a golf swing um, and during a golf motion. So, you know, there could be something fundamentally wrong with the way she's delivering the club. Um, perhaps she's coming out of her posture. Um, you know, I always like to say that, you know, the shoulders are, are rotating on a plane relative to the spine angle. So, you know, your spine is tilted and, you know, your shoulders are on this plane and, you know, getting that right shoulder down, you know, through your chips and making sure that that right shoulder kind of goes down toward the ball and, and ends up over your left foot is a good tip for the chipping and the putting and, and may help her with her longer shot too. And, and let me ask you this, because it just came to my mind. Yeah. As, as, as a player takes the club back and, and puts it in the, in, in what they believe is the right position, mm -hmm. How do you try or, or how would you tell somebody to try and eliminate the hands being the move rather than, as you just talked about, with the turn yeah. being the move? Taking, not, I don't want to say taking the hands out of it because that can mess people's minds up, yeah. but, but not making the hands the focus. I mean, the hands serve a purpose in the golf swing, right? It's the only connection to the club. It's The purpose of the hands is, is to load some power with your wrist hinge and to not manipulate the club face too much to where you can get it back to squared impact. But for me, what I like to teach and, and what I like to tell people is, you know, the club is always following the body. So I want the body working in a good sequence and I want the club connected to that sequence. Um, and so I really promote using the bigger muscles in the golf swing, you know, having the arms in the club follow the shoulders in the backswing because the shoulder turn is, is the main proponent of the backswing. It's the main thing going on in the backswing. Um, and then the downswing, you know, to eliminate the feeling of using the hands and the wrists, we're just going to really promote a good lower body sequencing. That's what's unwinding the upper body and, and ultimately bringing the club back to the ball. So we really try to keep the hands as quiet as possible from the top and really try to feel, you know, the unwinding of the hips and the, and the use of, of the ground and your, and your legs to create power and unwind that upper body that you took to the top. Yeah, and, and, and I know the hope is as more as more practice people practice, I'm gonna use the term it becomes natural or it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. Um and, and and I know that's what your hope is with, with your clients. Now sure. Paul wants you to talk and, and what you talked about earlier, the, the quality of your hitting surfaces. Mm -hmm. Paul wants you to talk about how different hitting off a mat at a range is other than hitting from regular grass. Yeah, so um, our turf hound mats are incredible. We have the same mats that Pebble Beach has, that Bell Reeve has, all the private clubs in town. So we got a great mat surface to hit off of here with turf hound mats. Um, you know, it gives you good feedback. It's not just a rubber mat where the club's just bouncing right off of it. You can get some feedback. You know, the biggest difference is, you know, when you hit behind a shot on a mat, you're going to get away from it. It's still going to get airborne. 
some people, you know, that don't understand that they've hit behind it, they still think, oh, man, I hit the ball great today. And then they go out <laughs> and they're, they're chunking everything. And they're like, what the heck happened? Well, you know, you have to be cognizant of, you know, what contact with the ball then mat feels like when you're on the mat. Um, but it does feel great off the mats. The, the turf on mats also provide another uh, height of turf. So we have kind of a rough height and a fairway height, uh, which is a nice offering. Um, you can work with your wedges on, on a little higher turf. Uh, which is great. But, you know, if, if you're having trouble chunking the ball, I, I suggest you go out to either our east or our west tee. Um, try to put a towel down behind your golf ball, maybe four or five inches behind the ball, and really focus on getting, you know, ball first contact. You want the low point of your swing to be in front of that golf ball, and uh, a drill like that with a towel behind your golf ball will help you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I always tell people, and, and some people get it and they don't, down and through, mm -hmm. down and through, capture right. that ball and, and down and through. Taylor says his biggest problem is hitting 40 to 60 yard wedges. Okay. He says he cannot dial in yardage for that hated half wedge. Yeah. Now you probably may, you might want to, you know, you might talk a little bit about the, the wedge options or, yeah. or the, the half swing or how you yeah. handle that. Yeah. A few things come into mind. I mean, yeah. you got to, you got to have a trajectory in mind for the shot that you're playing around the green. So that's really first in my mind after assessing the lie, obviously you got to assess your lie. And, and I'm, I'm going to stop you because yeah. I, I want you to say that again. And yeah. I want everybody to listen to what Adam says <laughs> before, before you do anything, you need to think of the traject, tell them the trajectory of the <laughs> shot and then how it's going to react. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the lie is really first. I should have started with that. You got to you got to see what the lie is. I mean, if it's sitting down in the rough, there's only a few options that you're going to have, right? If it's sitting plush on that nice zoysia grass and the fairways that we have here in St. Louis, you know, you got some other options. But really, the the pin placement, how far the green is to the edge of the or the pin is to the edge of the green, you know, those things are going to dictate if you're going to hit a high shot or a low shot. My rule of thumb around the greens is. Try to hit it low if you can and high if you have to. You know, pull out that 60 only if you need the loft. If you don't need that loft, then go with your gap wedge or your sand wedge before you pull that lob wedge. The lob wedge is like a last resort type of thing. Everybody is kind of conditioned to go up and just bring their 60 and their putter up to the green. You know, <laughs> I take all four of my wedges up to the green because I don't know what shot I'm going to hit. I don't know my lie yet. I don't know, you know, where the ball is going to land, if it's going to be a down slope or an up slope. Um, so, you know, with the 40 and 60 yard shots and those shorter wedge shots around the green, I mean, technique wise, you have to have a plan. I always say to my students, when you're a hundred yards, what do you do? And usually they're like, well, that's a full sand wedge or that's a full gap wedge. And then I ask them, all right, well, when you're 40 yards, what do you do? And they're just guessing. Most right. all of them are not too clear in their minds on what they're trying to do. They're going to try to slow down or swing a little shorter or speed it up or slow it down. It's literally a different swing all the time. So I practice more my wedge shots than any other shot on this driving range here and when I'm practicing and preparing for tournaments. Um, and so you really have to have a plan. And, and that's why we promote kind of um, the system where you have certain swings for certain distances. Um, we have different wedge, um, you know, deals where we, we literally set you up with a, with a grid. Or you get, <laughs> you get to wedge distances um, and you understand it. So in the back of my pocket, I know that from waist high to waist high with my 60, I carry it 28 yards. You know, chest high to chest high with my 60, I'm carrying that 42 yards. You know, so I know exactly my carry distances for certain swings. So when I'm 42 yards, I got a plan. When I'm 100 yards, I got a plan. You know, you got to you got to plan for those shots because you hit more shots within 100 yards than any other in the in, in a round of golf. So you better have a plan. That's for sure in this right. game or it'll break your heart. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on on all your success. Um, you really have changed the game and made it better. And uh, I look forward to more of these sessions with you. And, and I'm, I'm learning so much, um, you know, uh, CJ. I mean, it's like talking to Albert Einstein. Pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah, He's it's very it, talented. Where it's gone is incredible. And Adam, yeah. uh, have a great weekend in the Masters. And everybody get out to uh, Family Golf and Learning Center. And thanks for your support and continue the great work out there, Adam. Yeah, Jay, you know, thank you for your support, St. Louis. Thanks for your support and coming down to Family Golf and Learning Center to work on your game. 
allowing us to help you with your game, trusting us with your game. You know, this is me just giving back to the game that's given me a lot of opportunity in my life. Um, I love the game of golf, and I'm, I'm really happy to share it in the way that we do here down at Family Golf. So look forward to seeing you and everybody else watching down here at Family Golf. Everybody, enjoy the Masters, and hopefully when you're watching this, Jordan Spieth is getting to 12, knocking it on the green, and, and finishing the deal. Take care, my man. All right, Jay, be good. You got it. All right.